I want you to think about this when watching this video. If you are not making money on your YouTube channel right now, but that is something that you want to do, and a brand reaches out that you like, and they say, we want you to make a video on a specific product, even though you're not super fond of the product, but they offer you 25 grand. Would you say yes or would you say no? Really good. Something I've been thinking about a whole lot lately is the YouTuber's paradox. And this is something that is very hard to explain since I'm a YouTuber myself. And it's also my personal opinion. So this is me only trying to get my thoughts on to the camera so that you can understand the thinking that's going on in my head, if that makes sense. Let them on. I gotta put it down. Ooh, this is too bright. At least when I'm having sunglasses. I think this looks better. I have a, I don't know, what's the uh, eyesight trouble, vision error, something, something. And my old glasses actually broke. So these are the only ones that I got. I've been walking around with them every single day. People think I'm a diva. Someone will say that I'm trying to copy Casey Neistat. Go ahead. The YouTuber's paradox. This is something that I've been thinking of lately because it's it's been one of those things where you always go back and forth with what is the right thing to do and what is not right thing to do with your YouTube channel. Especially in my case, because I think way too much about this since this is my livelihood. This is what I do for work. Scrolling back all the way to the beginning though, when I first recorded my couple of videos in my kitchen at home, I'm gonna scroll this all the way back to 2015 when I was doing bodybuilding as well. I did YouTube videos because I thought it was fun. There was no monetary underlying thing by doing the videos and I just made them because I thought it was fun to record videos and document myself and just enjoy the process of learning. And I think that that is the core thing that everyone should keep in mind when they start a YouTube channel. As time progressed, I dove into like the whole filmmaking niche, as you may or may not know. And during my first couple of successes on YouTube, I started to realize that I can actually make a living from this. I can do this instead of working my daytime job. But what happens then is that when you start taking something that is just done for purely being fun and turn that into your job, then you also start to put pressure on yourself and you start to dive into the whole how much money can I make and what kind of money can I make? Is this money gonna be a sustainable thing for the future? Is this gonna be a recurring thing? Will the clients come back to me? Basically the way that every freelancer work as well. The more you do this or the more that I've done this, it's also kind of panned out into making more videos that I make money off than videos that I only make for the sake of having fun. And the more that I do this, I also think of the whole aspect, like where did making videos for the sake of making videos go? And that is where this vlog comes in because this vlog is just about making videos that I enjoy to make. And then I post them online for people to see if they want to see it or you in this case. But my main channel has become something that was what DHL was, not in the sense of being something boring that I have to do in order to make a living, but I need to have that to be able to make the videos that I do on this channel and that I want to make. When you're standing there creating YouTube videos for the first time and you're just doing it for the sake of having fun, there is no monetary aspect involved in that. There's no pressure on you. There's nothing that your audience expects because you haven't built that up yet. And there's nothing that brands expect because you're not working with brands. But when you put all those things things into play yourself because you want to trump what you already previously has done. The brand that is paying to be in the video 
that you're about to do. And then you have the audience that is going to be a receiver of the video that you're about to create. And then if that video doesn't perform the way that you wanted the video to perform initially, you're going to feel bad. And then you're going to start thinking, why am I doing this and not the thing that I did before? So the more you go into this, the more you realize that you're, it's kind of a paradox. But with that said, I'm also having the best time of my life. So I think that on the flip side, you got to think of how can I make this something that is fun for both me and the viewers. The way that I see it is that whenever I make a video on a product, I can take the 4K projector that I went out with in camp together with a friend watching Transformers in the woods. We're gonna try to strap a cord between these trees. Oh. <laughs> it's a little bit loose. Oh. I think that this works. Ta-da! Outdoor theater, whiskey, fire, this is just wild. That video was a fun video that was only possible to do with the support of a sponsor for that said video. And for example, the video where I shot a Insta360 on an RC car together with a couple of motocross bikes. Insta360, tilt a hydraulic arm, motocross. What could go wrong? That was also a video that wouldn't be possible without the support of a company that paid to be able to make that video. So the way that I'm thinking when it comes to my videos is that if I make a video with a product, it's not because it's the best and biggest and most badass product on the market. It's more that I think that this is a cool product that some people or maybe all my audience would like to see or even enjoy. I'm not necessarily pushing it so that everyone has to buy that specific product. I'm trying to make a fun video around that product. The downside is that when you do that, people will say that you're selling out. But what I'm trying to do is make a living and make videos that are fun at the same time. In the beginning, I made videos that no one cared of. They weren't fun and people complained about the lack of lights or the lack of audio or that I just recorded in my own apartment when I can afford to get out of my own apartment and actually do something that is a little bit extravagant and make a bigger project. There's a lot of people that complain that you're making too many things. I can't relate to you. This is too expensive, but it's more like, can I make this video and have fun and then we can have fun together? That is the way that I think. But I just wanted you to know that the YouTubers paradox that I'm having is something that I think a lot of people has. But I also think if you're a creator or if you want to be a creator, maybe freelancer, maybe YouTuber or whatever it's your profession is try to think that the more success that you get, the more people will interpret you as greedy, lucky, or whatever it might be. In my opinion, I'm just super honored to be able to do this. And I'm even more glad to be able to have you watching my videos. So thank you for that. That is all for today. <laughs>